doing something yesterday and it failed. So, okay, recording okay. is started. Perfect. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Jenkins Infrastructure Weekly Online Public Meeting. Uh, we are the 22 of February 2022. Today is a um, and is it anagram? You can take the date from left to right or right to left. Hey, nice. Okay, so today we have Mark, Stefan, Tim, and Derby with us. Um, who is missing here? Stefan. I'm here. Nice. Uh, first announcement. So I saw notification about release. I don't know if it was finished for today's release. 2030-35, Tim or Mark, do you know or don't? No problem. I haven't seen anything, so I'm guessing. So no. I, I see, I, I have seen that the releases are published to Artifactory. I have mm -hmm. not checked that the jobs have completed successfully and I haven't done the checklist. So I don't know, um, and I, I haven't done any investigation on a Docker image or a Docker tagging problem that was okay. reported by someone with regard to JDK 17. Okay. Um, currently checking, we have an automated job that rebuild the image, so quite, and it's yeah. visible on Jenkins IO. So yeah, and, and we, we can, I can check it separately, Damien. We okay. don't need to take the time here. If, if the weekly has not completed, I'll, I'll chase it later after I get my problems resolved. Okay. Uh, that's the fix. Um, today, okay, but at least on Jenkins IO, it's advertised that it's released, so we only have to do the last checks. Uh, just a note: last weekly introduced a lot of GUI changes, and the, by changes I include new features and graphical bugs that should have been fixed this week. So thanks for anyone reporting these issues and fixing these issues. Do you have any uh, other announcement? Tim, could you merge the change log for 2.336 on Jenkins.io? I, I think we already approved it. The docs office hours looked at it multiple times. Looks good. Yep, doing now. Thanks, good folks. Oh, yeah. yeah, I see the change log started for the next one two hours ago. Cool. I missed that one. I must have. Actually, no, I'm just way behind, I think. No, I must have. So the, as a reminder, the point for us as the infrastructure team is also to ensure that the tooling that we provide to the release team is working and is stable over time. So that sounds like last week happened without any hiccups. Sounds like this week also with the automated. So for once we have two weekly straight without any error on the tooling part. So just let's see next time we change something in the system. Just need some IRC notifications <laughs> when the build starts and finishes. That's correct. Good point. Good point, good point. Okay, uh, I don't have any other announcements. So I propose we start straight to it. So first of all, what did we do? Uh, congrats, Hervé, for the work on DigitalOcean. We are now using DigitalOcean machines in productions. The Kubernetes cluster has been added to CI Jenkins IO transparently. Uh, there are some jobs uh, that run or are currently running. We haven't checked strictly the metrics, but we could because it's reported on Datadog as well. But we saw some activity. Yeah. Currently, there are about uh, almost uh, um, 30 uh, jobs on uh, the digital sun cluster running. I don't nice. know if I can share you a screenshot here. No. Don't, don't worry, add the screenshot afterward on the meeting notes. Yeah. I publish it on ERC. So we will start. We will have to start checking after one week of full usage the the costs uh, that we consumed on the OKS, right? Because we have currently, added auto scaling. Yeah, currently with uh, two node pools, we we have uh, there is a minimal amount of uh, uh, 
dollars per month and it can go up to 3000 if uh, the auto skeleton node uh, go up to 10 nodes okay so we might have to be careful on that part and maybe reach out quite quickly on to digital and themselves um so yeah for the costs to be checked I, after uh, one week after one week how much did we consume on our credits? Uh, I've also added this morning uh, labels on uh, cluster on these uh, Kubernetes agents. So they have their uh, name in it if we want to to target a specific uh, provider in uh, our test job. Good idea. So you, can you can specify uh, CI, KU test, K, KI test, uh, or uh, DO case level. Okay. Thanks a lot for that. That's nice if you want to avoid that cluster or specify it for specific tests. Um, Hervé, did you wrote an email? Did you write an email to the developer mm, mailing list? Yet. Okay, not so that's yet. to do list. Uh, let's say cost, measure cost consumed. Um, and also, do you mind updating the CI Jenkins IO documentation? I will give you the link, the page where we list all the agents and labels available for developers to add the two new label, Kubernetes labels that you added so they know they can opt in or opt out if they start to see issue and they, are, they will be autonomous for continuing working if we don't respond immediately. Are they already in the sponsor page on Jenkins.io? If so not, that's, maybe. So first the, first, the doc for developer. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. Sure. And then, uh, yes, we have Digital Ocean. We need to improve and nurture the sponsorship. We need to check if they, as you said, are they on the sponsor page that I don't know, Mark or Tim, do you know? Or even Norway? I'm asking. I didn't check. I thought we had them added, but it's an easy check. We, I, I can take the action separately, or others can check it. It's okay. And there is a blog post to start on that topic on Jenkins. Are you? Mm, I can't sure. see them. I can't see DigitalOcean on the sponsorship page. OK, so Array, do you mind driving also all these to-do topic on Digital Ocean or ask someone yeah, no else problem. directly? Cool. No the goal is not for you to do all of them if you can't or don't want. It's just for you to drive and ensure that someone do this. And okay. Tim, Tim's right. We've got Datadog, Discourse, Fastly, mm -hmm, but yeah. no entry for Digital Ocean. Yep. OK. Nope, they should. So it's definitively in the to-do list, right? Yes. Cool. Are there any question, interrogation from things unclear on Digital Ocean? Cool. Uh, next step, the other major topic, really particularly targeted to the co infrastructure cost is the Azure AKS cluster. Uh, that's the top priority for now, at least from my point of view, because first, price. Second, security. Um, we now have a general reusable Terraform tooling that we shared on at least three different Terraform projects, DigitalOcean, Datadog, and AWS. So the next step now is to uh, re bootstrap the Azure uh, Terraform project that used to be defined as code. And then it has been run last time before I joined the team. So at least one year and a half ago. Since then, the configuration has been changed only manually on Azure. So it has drifted from the config as code, even though everyone tried their best to keep it updated. Thanks everyone for that effort. So my proposal, that's a proposal. So you can say, no, you can, you can stop me. Uh, but my proposal is uh, start from an empty repository again, 
We can always use Git to consult the older knowledge if we need to. And we start from scratch and we'll start to add Terraform resources. So the new private cluster to be created, we migrate everything then. And then we start either import existing resource or create new ones uh, on that project with modern tooling without interfering with the legacy states. Does it make sense? Is there anything that could cause problem? No, that sounds good. The main thing that's good from my point of view to get sorted will be the DNS, which would just be an import. Yep. The upcoming resources I see in the short term are the, pri the new private cluster, I guess, instead of the temp that we have right now. Uh, the DNS, reference to the CAA DNS recording, and the new MySQL database for writing. That's not priority, but that's a good exercise to get started with. So that's the status on Azure. Um, on the area of our dependencies to be kept up to date, it's, it's like a never ending topic, of course. Uh, thanks, Stefan, for the effort on keeping all the HashiCorp dependencies updated. You drove that change. So Terraform, Terraform modules, Terraform provider, and Packer, all these HashiCorp tools are kept up to date. Thanks to update clients, Stefan's uh, work and tracking. Um, there is some work around Golang when we need Golang on some Terraform or OpenVPN repository, for instance. Uh, these one weren't updating since a few weeks or months. So Stefan is currently working on that part. It's not as easy at this, as it is. So almost there. And we plan to do some contribution to update Cli because either we are slowed down by, let's say, unwanted behavior, or we want to improve our ability to define an infrastructure resource on one repository, like with Terraform, example, security group for AWS, and then get the real name of that resources tracked by Terraform and update it automatically on another repository. For instance, Jenkins in Jenkins config as code or update automatically documentation. Like you had a new label on Jenkins, you want it to be automatically updated on readme.markdown because these documentation are important for our users. So great job and yeah, let's go ahead. Is there any question, things are clear or things I could have forgotten on dependency topic? Okay, continuing then. Um, there has been a request from security team around account app key cloak. So it's a, it's not the first time that, requ that this request is emitted to the Jenkins Infra team. It has been for months, even years. That's the project of migrating account app features into key cloak installation. So account app is an application that helps a user to create and manage their account on our LDAP and centralized authentication for CI Jenkins IO, for Shira and all other items. Um, key cloak is the same, except that key cloak allows us to have a public front end and admin backends for administration. It provides way more feature and it's not a homemade application like account app. So the risks are, let's say, a bit lower using that. And that project was never finished. There were some blockers and I will need help from the people who worked on that in the past. I understand that the work that Daniel did on the matrix 3.0 Jenkins plugin uh, removed one of the last blockers. I don't know if there were other blockers. I've listed here on pure infrastructure, the three main blockers or almost blockers a uh, step that we need to fix in order to fully uh, switch out from account app and dump that project forever. Not that it was really useful, but key cloak is safer as for today and for the future. So I don't know if there are other elements that we did not track on that list, uh, things that you would remind Mark or Tim or the others. No, it was just the matrix auth thing and the group naming thing or something where you could create a user, you could possibly create a user with the same name as groups. Exactly. The, the Kcloak experiment is from a long time ago. 
is other tools has been studied like Dex. So should have we to go with Kicklook? Still go to with, with Kicklook? I don't know. Uh, because I, I, there are that's some, a good question. Yeah. Because there are some uh, uh, order with uh, some. Yeah, I don't know. Um, Dex wasn't providing airbag. Dex was only yeah. about identities. But it Not was sure. some time ago, and yeah. maybe the situation has changed since. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, good question. We'll have uh, to I ask. Uh, I've not known if there was and, and, yeah. Radek, yeah, but... and Olivier. Yes. So just because a note if, on that. Yep, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, if we are going uh, with another tool, there is a security assessment to be made, I think, as he sh might have been for Keyclock already. I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, one thing, though, we have clarified with Vadek uh, the fact that the security of the infrastructure in itself is the responsibility of the infra officer. It was a subject, yes. a long running subject between Olivier okay. and Daniel when they were respective security and infrastructure officer. Um, I don't know if the board had time to validate that change proposal. I don't remember. For me, okay. it was okay and for Vadek. Uh, that means that the account key clock sits in the middle of these two areas. So that's why we should ask them but we might expect that it's also our responsibility to define that. So we have to ask them for what are the requirements from their point of view. So we need them to act as consultant and not as doers on that yes. area. Okay. Sounds good for everyone or are you agreeing, disagreeing? Yes, agree. Thanks, Paul. So I, I don't know if anyone is willing to work on that topic. If Let's keep it. Uh, by default, I plan to, to keep it as infrastructure officer since it's my security new uh, brand, new uh, responsibility. But we need to finish the private Azure AKS thing because we need a private cluster to run a key clock with it. Uh, another small request that anyone could take. Um, we have a Jenkins controller named CertCI, managed by Puppet, like Trusted and CI.G. Um, it's only partially managed, meaning we manage the Docker-based image and the virtual machine, but we don't manage the Jenkins configuration. That instance is dedicated to the uh, security team. Vadek uh, has asked us on other channels uh, if they could have Windows agents. So the goal is to add the same cloud configuration for Gcask and enable it on that instance to, so they would have the same virtual machines ephemeral agent as we have on other uh, Puppet managed instance. Um, so that's the requirement. They are okay to add Jenkins configuration as code to configure agents. So if they are okay for that, we just we only have to proceed. Uh, that will be mainly adding Yara datas for that specific machine that should be work with the same image and same config. Um, exception, I've listed what is needed. Two elements are as code. We might need to ask them to insert a credential though, because credentials are manually managed. So I don't know if anyone would want to try this one. Do you think I'm able to? Yes. So I will, if you if you agree. Yes. Is there anyone against or for? I agree for Stefan doing it. Yes. <laughs> Plus one for me as well. That sounds great. Yeah. The only thing I'd say is generally your default route doesn't include that instance. You need to modify your config on the VPN or locally on your machine. 
Oh, in, yeah, yeah. In order to get access to Cert CI, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, yes. you can just you can just add your route to it locally, or you can change the VPN to, to add your route to to push your route yep. to it. It, it. It's the same thing as Cert CI. Uh, yeah, uh, sorry, as a, sorry, trusted. You need an SSH tunnel to reach it. No, you don't need an SSH tunnel. You just need a route added to it. <laughs> okay. Uh, thanks. Just, yep. Let me write this down. I'm just trying to remember where the VPN config is. Is it in the Docker, Docker. Open VPN repo? Yes. Uh, here no, don't worry, we will double check this one. Uh, that's a good reminder in case because we would have forgotten otherwise. I think the run book might have the definition, I'm sure. Mm, yeah, I've used it once. Cool. I, I have access to Cert CI by default. So worst case, I can always uh, compare uh, other settings to mine so we can find yeah. what is missing. Yeah, you have access. Um, I think you're one of the few. Um, but OK, thanks. So uh, Stefan, thanks. that will be your next task. Um, we don't have an help desk issue for this one because Cert CI is a kind of, uh, let's say, uh, area that can go sensitive very quickly. So that's why we have to keep talk internally. Um, I, I'm really, still... I don't think that's sensitive. That should really have a ticket. Yes. <laughs> um, okay, yes. Uh, if Vadek is OK with that, I'm all, uh, all uh, on help desk. So your first mission, Stefan, is ask Vadek convince if, to convince. Yeah. Because <laughs> not ask, convince. <laughs> yeah, it's just. They are OK for us to speak it publicly on that meeting. So I agree with Tim that should be on help desk, but we never know. So better to ask first, better safe than sorry on that area. But yeah, you're correct, Tim. You're, I agree with you that should be public. Easier to track and to delegate. Yeah, I think you might have added um, cert CI to most people anyway. I think you synced the config to be the same for all the files um, in December. 2021 on the 30th of December. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. so that it's Puppet applied. Olivier was able to, to negotiate with Daniel to enable it again because they were required month around updates. So it's updated at least for the core Docker image. And so that's no, why just, it should be easy. I just mean, I think you made all the routing the same for everyone um, oh, at, the, at okay. the end of December. So I okay, so that should be okay. I think, I think you just applied your config to everyone. OK, sorry, I didn't hear your the beginning of your sentence, maybe. Um, there is also an ongoing issue from security since a few weeks around disabling anti-spam for the CERT team. I've put the link at the help desk. Um, just a reminder, Mark, so at around Christmas, I think, or after, uh, oh, in January, a few weeks ago, you blocked, uh, thanks a lot, an IP at IP table level on the CI Jenkins IO virtual machine because there was spamming CI Jenkins IO. It was done at the Linux kernel. Um, can can you remind us or does someone remember? Because I was out, so I don't know what has been done after that. Yeah, I've I've okay. done nothing since then. It's embarrassing to admit that I've done nothing at all since then. That IP is still blocked, and we just need to take an action to probably by now unblock it and watch that it's not an issue uh, and get rid of that single IP table hack that I put in. Assume you just restart IP tables and it will be gone unless you modify it on disk. <laughs> yeah, I assume ah, okay. that we have so restarted. So it may already be gone then. Great, okay. even better. Yeah, IP tables just does it while it's running by default. You have to write, you have to modify files to get it to save. Of the manual blocker, if not already done, due to VM reboots and IP table not persisted. Cool. Thanks for the reminder. I'm taking this one if it's okay for everyone. Yeah, that would be great. So yes. Forgive my not, not taking the <clears throat> further action, but yes, that more than happy to have somebody else undo my damage. The other thing back when you mentioned spam was cert, because it's just a 
similar thing is that you can see our dev mailing list is still going into spam even after the change that Mark made um, a few weeks back. Uh, on the Google Groups, right? Mm. Yeah. Yeah, and I see the same thing for Jenkins users and several others. I have to just monitor my spam folder. Yeah, yeah I'm doing that too, but it's annoying. Um, I remember Henri was shared something with me. Uh, my email foo is close to zero. I have no idea if this spamming stuff works. So I will defer to someone who knows or I need to educate myself. It's on that complicated. Part. It's yeah. really complicated. Unless you're Google, right? Yeah, but it's from Google. Well, so fucking spam. Google to Google is missing. Like, yeah. Oh, crap. Like, so okay. I, I don't think we will be able to do anything about it. Okay. Uh, we reconfigured. Uh, it's Kevin who show us the uh, send by uh, the mailing list or send by the user. And mm. it's, it's apparently configured to be sent by the mailing list. So apart that, I don't see what we can do about it. Do we do? Do we have DKIM or, or SPF records or? Uh... For Google, no, there's an idea the that the settings available is you send the email from the mailing list or from the user. It's about that. that. Hmm. I'm not sure there are more parameters. Do, do, do we have a, an Elbesk issue or with people complaining or let's say elements uh, that I could no, use to indicate myself? Was, there I is, but it was closed sure. because we thought it was fixed, but it's definitely not fixed. I'll okay. reopen it. Um, it, it, so, so can you share the link on IRC or in the meeting notes? It's just to, so if we see that again, can you share knowledge and elements on that issue? So yeah, anyone could take it or start doing it. It's not a big priority, but it's really annoying uh, for most user facing that. So if we can, anyone with email knowledge could help, that could be great. We looked, it was fixed, but no. Finish to reopen and add technical yeah. elements. Yeah, all the stuff I see on Google is about spam to Google Groups, not the other way around. <laughs> yep. um, and an upcoming topic uh, also, so what, what you said about ARC notification. So let's say your next big thing once most prior has been done, will be enabling a custom IRC channel used for notification, uh, maybe multiple depending on the topic, I still don't know. Uh, that's another part where I don't know anything, but Hervé and Tim, you seem to have worked on Jenkins Infra notification IRC channel. I don't understand why, but I can't debug it since it's running on trusted. If I... If I can, uh, the, in the Jenkins Afra Puppet code, the butler is configured to post and to join the new channel I've created. Oh, OK. So but we have. I can't debug it. I can't log on the machine to see its log since yeah, okay. it's running elsewhere. We discussed about moving. Okay. Infra reports to from uh, trusted to Infra CI. Good I point. think this one could be moved to. Okay, uh, so Infra CI. So let me finish on the notification topic. Yeah. So just three elements. We have puppet notifications. So just what just you said earlier. Uh, we have to work on that. I propose we work both of us survey. Um, it's because we have the Puppet Master virtual machine that control all the Puppet um, uh, stuff are applied and it receives message when a Puppet agent apply its Puppet manifest on a given VM. And that machine is almost not managed as code. It's kind of hidden somewhere. And this is also where the I understand, I understand based on the recent uh, feedbacks that that machine is responsible for connecting to IRC and sending messages. So that's where we would have to interact. 
maybe moving the the puppet bots from there. I, I don't know if it works, so we will have to to diagnose uh, at least the both of us. But about notification, we also have Infra CI and Release CI notification. So the notification from these two Jenkins instances. Um, Infra CI sure. could be on the same channel as Puppet, but the goal will be when we have one of our Terraform, Kubernetes management, or even Docker images, jobs, or Packer. When the main branch, the principal branch of this repository fails to build, we should receive the notification at least. I don't mind for pull request that will be too noisy, but at least the main on the main repository. Yes. So we know it's failing and we have to fix it. Yep. As Stefan discovered earlier today, OpenVPN wasn't able to wasn't able to update its dependencies since a few weeks, for instance. It could be worse, it could be Kubernetes management. So yeah, sorry. No, I was uh, I was thinking we can also have a, a specific channel in uh, in our proprietary Slack, but complementary to this IRC notification. Yeah, it's first first. Yeah, 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 first IRC. And as team um, as team and Daniel suggested during the past days and weeks. Uh, we might want also a Jenkins release notifications that will receive uh, messages from release.ci to help, or maybe the Jenkins release channel, I don't know. But when a, re a weekly release starts, it sends the first message. And when it's finished, it sends another message, at least, and same for LTS. So that will be part of the release process. When release starts and finish. I propose we start with these three ones and see how, how it helps us. And as you say, there are very important one infra reports to be migrated out from trusted to CI into infra CI. This involve using a switching to GitHub app uh, I will add there is an help desk uh, issue for that. The initial trigger was re, uh, costs and availability of uh, agents on trusted CI. And also there has been issues reported by Raul Aruborosa, one of our uh, contributor, where at the credential GitHub use for infra report is lacking some permissions and some plugins resulting yeah. on the maintainer, the correspondence between plugins and maintainer and plugins Jenkins IO not being correct on some uh, cases. Yeah, it's the GitHub user Jenkins admin, which was used to retrieve this, uh, this data. And since uh, uh, Jenkins admin user uh, permission has been uh, reduced to the minimum uh, in December, uh, I think this data uh, incomplete since then. Exactly. So the goal will be to switch to a GitHub application dedicated only for that. Tim uh, gave to Hervé and I at least the GitHub app uh, uh, administration right on Jenkins CI so we can create and manage the application. We need an administrator right to in install it or update it on production on Jenkins CI organization, but that will allow us to generate credentials only for that, that are strictly scoped and that doesn't depend on a GitHub account. So really better in terms of security because any admin can change it, but still it's a GitHub app that can be pretty tight scope. That GitHub app could not read private repository content, for instance, only plugins. Okay, so that's a lot. I, I took on myself to add um, on line 92 um, an option to uh, handle the new, uh, in case of spamming on the kernel, to use uh, fail to ban to automatically lock IPs if you if you want. You can erase that or not, but that's 90. 
That's interesting. Never used fail to ban, but yeah, uh, oh. that's you already uh, had it. I heard it was easy to manage, right? Yeah, it's really. You just I have think to. I... Sorry. Sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. I think I, I've also mentioned the CrowdSec uh, IP blacklist uh, uh, crowdfunded, but uh, I don't know how easy it could be implemented. I think it need I an know. agent. I know fail to ban, which is yeah. quite easy, but fail I don't know is, about the crowd. Fail to ban is uh, independent, and CrowdSec yeah. is uh, collecting all IPs of fail to ban from. Oh, you're admins. merging all the information on the on the yeah, and it's okay. crowdfunded, so yeah. you you benefit from. Okay. Please correct my misunderstanding. I thought that fail to ban was a tool that, given a list of IP address to allow or deny, it was blocking automatically connection at IP That's system, system level. No, no. Uh, fail to ban no. is watching your log files and is uh, taking uh, an instantive uh, action depending on what yeah. you tell him to do. For example, if, so if an IP the... fail on, on three or four times to log uh, using the SSH daemon um, on SSH, it will be locked out. But we can do whatever we want uh, as a declaration for fail to ban to ban an IP. For example, if we have log of um, CI Jenkins IO of a spammer, meaning that the that IP try to do something three, four, five times, and we got that in the log, we can tell fail to ban, okay, you have to ban that IP. And it will first ban it for like one hour, second time for two, eight, and, and years, depending on how often it's coming up. Okay, in the, so in the logs. If correctly configured by checking Apache logs, could it do the same as what Mark did manually at IP table level? Exactly. Okay. So I understand correctly. So uh, fail to but ban it's and not sharing. Are... Yep. It's not sharing any information with others. Yeah. Like like yeah. CrowdSec. CrowdSec is sharing yeah, IPs CrowdSec that are completely bad different. behavior and are, are kicked right away. Uh, there is no sharing with the, with fail to ban. It's just using the current log in in the system. Yeah, and okay. I think I'm not sure how CrowdSec is easy to implement. Uh, it might need and an it, agent and else and so, so, so on. So fail to ban should be more than enough. Th there uh, is something least, uh, around crowd sharing that we need to make sure is that the sharing of the IP is, is um, compliance with any kind oh, of data sharing. I'm, yeah. I'm, yeah, right. I'm sure you can you can only allow inbound so to you retrieve the external IP and you don't give yours. Yeah, but that's kind of bad if you're using the system, you're yeah. part of the system. Yes. I will not tell you that, you know. Okay, uh, interesting, I didn't know. I knew fail to ban for SSH. Uh, it's installed on most of the cloud server and works. Yeah, that's because it's the default way of working, okay. but you got tons of Makes way sense. of using it. Okay, so we'll, I will check for that one. Uh, <coughs> Thanks. Welcome. I think that's all. Do you have other topics or things you want to add or want to clarify? Uh, Siri Papa Mirror, I'm not sure at all if it's working. There is an help desk opened about Mirror, not updated. I'm not sure. It's not only Alibaba Mirrors. Mirror, it's, I, let me find the issue. Oh, that could be. The wall mirror system not updating. Oh. That one might be important to check first then. Okay, thanks. I missed that one. Yes, it's the help desk issue. Uh... Up, uh, this one. Okay. Hmm. Thanks a lot. So we gotta check this one. 
sorry for one one old topic mm -hmm. the uh, the 2.336 release is not complete at least in the sense that I can't see Linux installers yet so I've got to do some more research uh, nothing no actions from others required yet but it's, okay when I look at when I attempt to do an install of a weekly on my on my test machines, the weekly, as far as I can tell, is not visible yet. Oh, it's visible funny. there, and, yeah. and that's a good sign. So it just needs more investigation. I'll do the research later. Okay, just to be sure, because if it's available here, that's weird, because it means that the Linux repository should have been updated already on their index. So that might be uh, something weird on the deployment process. Thanks. Don't mm -hmm. hesitate if you need help or additional tests. Thank you. Cool, I don't have any other topics. Do you have some? Okay, folks, you deserve a you deserve a coffee or tea or whatever. Thank you. Uh, rock your boat. Have a nice day. Thank you, everyone.